bago ang lahat. Sa aming mga Yu-Gi-Oh! fans, considered milestone ng episode 75 because, well, uh, based on the franchise's track record, maraming mga gandang episodes or uh, crucial episodes ang ang pinalabas ng Konami ng araw. So, rundown natin. One day, Roman made a um, suggestion that uh, that she, Roa, Gakoto, and Mimi sh should go to Yuga's house. I think everybody uh, has already assumed that the uh, the road re Yuga's road research lab bahay na niya yun. But, yeah, I myself am puzzled as to why Roman suggested this. Well, they all went, no, they, they all decided to, um, to go to Yuga's house at the same time. So, well, while they're on the way, nasa, nasa lubong nila si Asana. And, uh, tinanong naman ni Asana kung uh, saan sila pupunta. Uh, they're going to Yuga's house. Medyo na sense ni Asana na, hin na hindi tama ang gagawin ng mga to. So, well, she just asked them directly, uh, Why? Uh, I don't think Yuga's home right now. So, in effect, Eh, sinabi naman ni Romy na we just, we, want, we just want to investigate kung, kung talagang uh, President Sibling si Yuga. Sinabi naman ni Asana, I wanted to, I want to know that myself. Pero, you're doing this behind Yuga's back. Maka, uh, baka, sira, baka masira nyo ang tiwala, ang tiwala niya sa inyo. Due to Roman's instigations, so they, they, they proceeded to walking, walking towards Yuga's house as if, uh, as if they know, okay? Pinigil na na naman sila ni Asana. So, sinabi lang niya, I'm afraid I can't allow you. You'll have to beat me in a duel right now. Ang sumagot sa... Sa hamon ni Asana, si Roa. So, duel is on. But strangely enough, ang ikli ng duel eh. It only lasted three turns. Third and final turn, that's when, he, that's when Roa beats Asana. In the end, sinabi ni Asana na, kung itutuloy nyo pa rin yan, bahala kayo. If, if you violate a person's trust, you may never earn that trust again. Uh, well, well she, she, Asana's got a point. Okay? Asana has a point. Pero tuloy pa rin yung apat. They went to this parang uh, townhouse complex. Parang kasi talagang dikit-dikit yung bahay. At ang wee weird na mga design. Ngayon, nakita nila si Yuga naglalakad. So, napunta na. Tapos, another... It's Yuga again, but this time coming from the right, dito. Then, another Yuga, then another... So, ano to? The four had no choice but to, but to go their separate ways and uh, follow the Yuga they saw. So, pak, pak. So, okay, mawawalay. Then, all of a sudden, nakita-kita sila sa isang, sa isang, sa isang point ng, ng complex na to. Nagulat nga nila. Patay, napunta rito. Eventually, May lumabas na pitong yuga. <laughs> so they had no choice now but to... Uh, what you call this? Hinamon sila ng duelo ng pitong ito. But, sabi ni... Biglang... Uh, tawag dito, sumingit si Asana. At sinabi, Wop, teka muna. That's not the real Romin. Ang kasakay pala niya, yun yung totoong Romin. Nahabol nila, they were able to thwart the Duel Insects Club's plans. Baka na lahat ito ni Nana ko. Even, uh, she dressed as the fake Romin. Talagang hinarap siya ni, ng totoong Romin eh. Sino ka ba? Pakilala mo na sarili mo. <laughs> so eventually yan, si Nana ko. The leader of the Duel Insects Club. They were doing ground research on, well, well I, we can now say they're swarm enemies, Team Sevens. Kasi, we all know what happened uh, in the duel between Nanako and... Uh, Nanako nga ba? O Nanana. Anyway, basta yung leader ng Duel Insects Club na nakalaban ni Yuga. Well, ito sigurado ang, ang ganti niya sa barkada ni Yuga. But she now knows that, well, 
They've been uh, Team Sevens has been doing things behind Yuga and looks back. Final scene. What? Ayun nga. Yuga and Luke are with Swirly and si Kaizo. Si Kaizo ang umaanalay kay Swirly. They ended up in this parang abandoned amusement park. Kasi uh, pinapasyal nga nila si Swirly hoping na syempre, uh, hoping that the kid snaps out of it kasi it's just it's just acting. So, kumaga Oh, um, before before he goes before the kid goes into the deep end, di ba? Matilikado to. So they stumbled upon this abandoned amusement park, and that's when the episode ended. So let's break this down, ARD style. Pace. If there's anything the pacing of this episode will tell you, it's probably this: the dual insects club has now uh, start now has started making its move right now. Kasi, like I said, uh, a few a few a few digests ago in the ARD, Yuo may become the least of Team 7's problems here in this episode. But thanks to the pacing, we also saw in this episode how uh, devious this club is. Walang sinabi ang ano rito, ang Machine Cavalry Duel Club. Or even, um, uh, or even Neil, or even Neil and his lackeys. Wala. Talagang, they, talagang na, nalin lang nila ng husto ang, ang Team Sevens dito. They did this behind Luke and Yuga's back. Habang abala sila sa, sa, sa pagtulong kay Swirly. Uh, that, that's disturbing. Okay, that's, that's disturbing. Forgivably slow. Now I can say it. It's the pacing is forgivably slow because of uh, because of the um, what's called this of uh, of how it turned out. Flow naman. First gear shift here was when Asana challenged uh, to a duel. Excuse me. Why do I call this a gear shift? Well. Simply lang mga ka-lifestyle Patreon. It's supposed to show you how much of a friend Asana is to Yuga. Kasi, siya ang nagsilbing reality checks sa Team 7s dito. And, well, um, kung nakinig lang sila beforehand kay Asana, well, the duel isn't really necessary eh. Hindi sila siguro napakagat sa plano ng, ng mga dual insects na to. Malaki ang utang na loob nila ngayon kay Asana. And she should and they should consider her uh, a vital ally now for Team Sevens. Yuga has earned her respect, number one. And of course, her trust. Kumbaga may mutual trust na yung dalawang yun, si Asana at si Yuga. And I guess... Team Sevens was too late to accept that. That's what this gear shift is also telling me. Now, final gear shift, dalawa lang yon, was when Asana brought the real Roman to to the scene to the to the scene of the deception. Sorry, ka na lang nana ko. <laughs> you just uh, you just came face to face with probably the new Roman. <laughs> It's a vital gear shift, folks, because it also tells us that someone other than you is working very hard to bring down Rush Duels. Someone more evil? Puede. So, these two gear shifts that I saw definitely will play a role down the line uh, in this Yu Gi Oh! series. Pivotal episode, definitely because of these two gear shifts. Plot wise, malinis. Despite the slow pacing, malinis eh. Kasi everyone's trust issues were tested here. 
Despite the slow pacing, again mga ka-lifestyle, the plot was this clean. And, I forgot, I almost forgot to mention, they were having these trust issues behind Yuga's back. The only one have not having trust issues with Yuga right now is Luke. Pero the rest, meron eh. So, they, they really got, they really have to settle these trust issues. Dahil, it's, with all indications in uh, in this episode, talagang uh, pinakita sa kanila ng Duel Insects Club on how weak they are, trust-wise. Sinabi nga na, eh, ng, ng leader dito, si, si talaga nana ko ba yung nana na? How can you beat us if you can't even trust each other? She's got a point. Pero, <laughs> huwag siya magpapakampa, magpapakampante. Once you got... Once Yuga steps in, she might, he might beat her again. Parang ganun lang yun. The plot is so clean, we're able to, to, to dive this deep into it right now. Patreon, mga ka-lifestyle. Ang dami ko na sinabi regarding this episode. Ganun kasi kalinis ang plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7, episode 75. Tito Zell! Kala nyo, one top up, ano? No, 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 no. Hindi porkit mabagal ang pacing pangit na episode na. Here's a power tip for you, Patreon, mga ka-lifestyle. A good episode doesn't require a fast pace all the time. Depende sa genre yan. But, in the case of Yu-Gi-Oh! It has dealt into slow pacing episodes before. Pero, it turned out to be really good. Reality check, Team 7s. You have trust issues that Yuga doesn't know. Don't you think it's about time that he... Uh, he, he gets to know what you just discovered? Ewan ko lang kung nasabi na ni, ni Luke ito. So, maraming pwedeng mangyari, maraming dapat malaman from the, uh, based on this episode. Kaya, tutok pa more. <laughs> so again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 sa episode 75. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this. Wow, this fan-friendly Yu-Gi-Oh! series mga ka-lifestyle. Dual insects na the whole. Pag-ingat kayo dyan, Team Sevens. Pag-ingat kayo dyan. So, what do we do now? Simple lang. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. If you're on Patreon right now, wait for my next upload. But, if you still want to confine yourself to the ARD, you'll just have to enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Aftermath. So, Botan is feeling sorry for herself. Kuroma started going, st doing these fresh moves uh, to Botan just to make her feel better. Pero, eh, sinasabi sa kanya na parati ni Ryunosuke, it is not like you. So, epic fail parati. While well, well, the three of them are talking, merong... Uh, pinakita sa kanila ni Bota na diary ng kanyang nanay si Kazuko Kazuko Nigoro ang pangalan it was about her well, scientist ang nanay ni Kazuko yung, yung anak mismo ng lolo niya this made Bota somewhat uh, parang demoralized kasi there is no mere mention of her mother during her pregnancy to her she started, well, ever since she started uh, having these feelings of uh, neglect, uh, loneliness. Pero, may suspecha si Ryunosuke. Why would a, um, a budding mother not leave notes about her pregnancy? 
puro research lang about the shards. So, there must be another diary somewhere. Eh, sinabi na nga, eh, sinabi rin niya to kay, kay Kuruma, but Kuruma being the blockhead that he is, he, he doesn't buy it. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't buy it. Medyo nagkaroon, nagkaroon din na suspecha si Kuruma na tama si Ryunosuke. Baka nga meron pang isa pang diary na itinago ng nanay ni Botan. He turns on a light switch that allows the moonlight to bounce off a round mirror pa ganun, tapos papalabas. So nagtaka siya kung bakit ganun ang ang forma. Labas siyang ganun. Meron pa lang. So that that uh, that that spot of moonlight na the, the spot that moonlight is shining on parang kakaiba eh. So kinapanin ni Kuruma na meron siyang, naka, meron siyang parang napindot na ganun. And unknowingly nasa likod lang niya si Ryunosuke. Sabi niya, sabi ko na nga ba't ma may explore mo rin yung sinabi ko eh. So did that effect. So they proceeded to opening that ayun. May box pala. It's a puzzle box na iniwan, siguro iniwan para kay Botan. Kailangan pala may sequence ito para sinabi ni Ryunosuke. There's a sequence in these blocks that that need to be moved para, para, para talaga mabuksan ang kahon. Meron na recall si Botan na kumuha siya agad yung chopping board sa kitchen, kinuha niya. Meron siyang nakitang strike, striking resemblance size-wise. Kasi nilaki ng chopping board na to, yung diary na iniwan sa kanya. Huwag mabagalaki. Okay. So, binuksan nila at inilapat na gano'n yung chopping board sa unang page ng diary. Uy! May butas pala. So, so binasa nila uli. Ito yung sequence na hinahanap natin. So, so they kept, so, okay, sinundan nila. Bawat page, patong. Page, patong. Until they were able to to open the box without without uh, without even uh, without even destroying it may nakalagay na isa pa diary doon binuksan nila may ultrasound may ultrasound photo so binasa nila this is my first ultrasound test yup I am pregnant okay so binasa pa nila uh, what dreams will you have? But um, basically, the contents of this diary are about Kazuko's impending motherhood. So, in if well, obviously excited siyang maging nanay. So, sabi nga ni Kuruma, oh, no feelings of embarrassment, I see. Yeah, well, your mother's proud of you. Sabi nga, in effect. Something to the right back, sinabi niya kay Botan. Your mom is proud of you. Eh, umiyak na lang sa tuwa si Botan. Then, from out of the blue, the grandfather shows up. Pero pala siyang sikretong itinago kay Botan all, all these years. Dito niya sinabi sa episode na to. So, well, if you're prepared, mga ka-lifestyle, uh, Patreon, here's the full backstory. Si Kazuko pala, Okay, this is this is how the grandfather is, to, is uh, telling the story. Si Kaso ko pala, ginugroom niya bilang secret agent, but she doesn't have the stomach for it, medically. So, well, that's put aside. Hindi pwede. She, so, she eventually became a scientist researching on the shards of Tesla. Now, of course, pinabayan ng tatay. Kasi it's all about the shards. So, she was... Uh, continuously researching it day by day. Then, something to this effect, um, there, was a, there was another person in their lives named Daito Yamato, who is, well, he, he's, he's a Japan safety agent during those times. Hindi alam ng lolo na may relasyon na pala ang dalawang ito. 
Then, on uh, on the day of Botan's birth, biglang nawala si Daito. Now, ni-reveal na ngayon kay Botan that Daito is her father. And up to now, he's being suspected of being a double agent. Kumbaga, una kasita ito. Hindi talaga Japan safety. So, sabi na lang ng lolo, I wouldn't be surprised, Botan, if your father is, is on the higher ups now of Una Asita. Kasi, whatever secrets her mother took to the grave, her father took to Una Asita. Ganun lumalabas sa storya na to. Kaya, kaya, alam na ng Una Asita kung saan, ha, kung saan hahanapin ang mga shards and how to unlock each of them hindi nagalit si Botan sa kanya. Ang importante ng kay Botan na uh, her mother didn't feel ashamed of her. So, for her, that's all that matters right now. Kaya, bumalik na ang resolve niya and uh, she actually begged Kuruma and Ryunosuke to accept her back into the mission. Mission T. Yun ang pangalan kasi ng mission eh. To recover the shards. Kaya sabi na dalawa, Kailan, kailan ka ba namin, kailan ka ba namin uh, itinugi dito? <laughs> In effect, yun ang sinasabi nila. So, while this was going on, um, Elmo reported to their big boss, ang una kasita. Pinakita rito ang mukha ng big boss nila. So, if this is Botan's dad, nako po, problema to. Final scene, bad news for the CIA. Oliver is being suspected of being a mole for Una Kasita. Kasi, nung tumawag ng tulong sa Asclepius si Mickey, merong listening device pala siyang hindi nalalaman na naka-embed sa cellphone niya. And it was activated from just within a few, within a few feet of him. Hindi listo sa kanya to ng, ng boss niyang babae. Well, Ano naman yung ano naman yung mga uh, uh, ano naman na Japan safety because they were busy uh, they were busy tending to Kuruma yeah who, who was shot at the time so it's not other than Oliver so sinuspindi muna siya ng CIA at iniimbestigahan hindi makapaniwala si Mickey so let's run this down ARD style shall we pace the pace picked up only during the final scene nung dinisclose ng ng director kung anong status ngayon ni Oliver aray mukhang so nakapagtataka nga eh a top secret ship infiltrated by Una Kasita ng ganong kabilis at ganong kadali paano so yep Director figured there's a mole in the CIA. So, ang pinagsuspecha niya, si Oliver. For the most part of the episode, it was slow. Bibilisan nila ang pace ng episode na to. Hindi natin mararamdaman yung, ano eh, yung self-pity ni, ano eh, yung self-pity ni, ni Botan for, for accidentally killing an una kasita agent. Yung nga, si Pino. And, uh, yeah, I, I felt that. Kasi talagang, uh, I felt Botan's low self-esteem here this entire episode until, uh, yun nga, na, nalaman, nalaman na niya finally that her mother's not ashamed of her when she, when, when she, when she died while giving birth to her. So, talagang binigyan siya ng reassurance na, hey, I gave, uh, what's going I gave up my life for you. Make the most of it. Parang ganon yung sinasabi dun sa dun sa sa secret diary na nakita nila. Yeah, na feel ko yun because of the pacing. Okay, no complaints. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when um, unang sinuspechahan ni Ryunosuke ang diary, yung unang diary. Why did I call this a gear shift? Oh, it's a no-brainer, hello. Kasi, 
with the episode at hand this holds the key to to um to getting bought on self esteem back at ayun ganun nga nangyari so they found a secret diary were in ayun puro puro kay puro patungkol kay Botan eh hindi pa siya pinanganak noon so nasa chat pa lang siya ng nanay niya it's quite a, um a vital gear shift for this episode alone kasi kung wala yon baka hanggang ngayon demoralized si Botan eh baka tuloy na siyang umalis sa sa, sa Japan safety yeah thank god for this gear shift so second gear shift was ayun nga nakita nila yung secret diary when they were finally able to to uh, to open that box without um uh, without physically tampering it why did i call it a gear shift well number one this is how smart ryunosuke is simply lang and sinabi rin niya rito yung ano eh yung yung main reason niya kung bakit niya gusto tulungan si Botan para to get, get her out of that funk and get back into the thick of, thick of things. It all, he all, he just based it on a hunch. Nagkaroon din siya na suspecha on how to, uh, on how to unlock this box dun sa first diary. Sabi niya kasi, the instructions on how to open this box is probably in the first diary. Eh, ang choppy board supposed to be, wala talaga dapat butas yan. Doon lang sa, siguro sa hawakan, yan, or sa sapitan. But on the actual board itself, on the, on the board itself, dapat walang butas dyan. Wow, what a gear shift that was. Final gear shift was when the grandfather spilled the beans regarding, uh, regarding Botan's parents, not just the, not just the mother. That's why, that's why I call this a gear shift. It just goes to show you how much of a deadbeat Botan's father is. So these three gear shifts that I saw, definitely, they will play a role down the line in these final four episodes. These upcoming final four episodes of the anime. Hindi ko pala tayo roll to the finale because 13 episodes ka pala ang, ang Tesla Note. The roll to the finale starts next week with episode 9. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Tama. So, yeah, what a way to set us up for the road to the finale. Plot wise, mm, there was a backstory sequence, pero. Dirin, planchado ang plot. I could not say na malinis, dahil. Um, it took up a considerable amount of time, uh, the backstory sequence. Okay lang kung ganong, kung ganong ka-profound the backstory sequence. Okay lang. So, it won't, it won't hurt if you put in five or six seconds of that. Okay lang. So, well, ironed out naman ang plot ng episode na to. So, that's the only backstory sequence kasi of this episode. Kaya, no complaints. Again. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, sabi ko sa inyo, Patreon, mga ka-lifestyle, it is a great setup for the road to the finale. So, test the note, episode 8. Feel ko yung sapiti ni Botan dito eh. Two thumbs up. That's probably the only reason I gave it the two thumbs up. Kasi talagang the pacing and the plot were so profound. Were for Ryunosuke, we wouldn't, she, Botan wouldn't have um, gotten out of this funk. The, um, the dirty secret her grandfather held all these years regarding her father means nothing to her now. Kasi, Nalaman niya na through the second diary, eh, may, may ultrasound picture nga na nandun eh. So, hindi, ka, hindi pala ako kinahihiya ng nanay ko. Okay, I'm happy now. Sige, balik na ako sa mission. Kaya, 
it's a it's a profound episode it's a really profound episode kaya I give it it's also one of the it's the number two reason why I give it a two thumbs up right um and there's a moral lesson actually never give yourself a bad tap on the shoulder parang ganun lang yan eh because it may become your reality mahirap na so again Tesla Note Episode 6 2 thumbs up another 2 thumbs up for this anime mga kamarista proof that Bonan's father is a deadbeat excuse me So what do we do now? Patreon, Mako Lifestyle? Of course, the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Tandaan niyo. Road to the finale na starting next week. Kaya, tumutok na. So, for you, Patreon, wait for my next upload. Now, uh, for everybody who are still uh, following the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. May two-part story na naman. First story muna. After several um, practice sessions, Dralok was finally able to transform into a bat. Standard transformation ng lahat ng mga vampires yun. E ngayon, medyo naman problema si Dralok. Hindi siya makabalik. Um, well, he can't transform back to, you, to vampire form na ganun kabilis. So, uh, he was stuck in in bat mode for um for a well, for a considerable amount of time. Like, hindi niya hindi siya makalabas dun sa sa office. So he can't um uh, turn the knob to open the door. Pero nabuksan niya yung yung bintana. He was yeah, he was able to open that. So Nakalipad na siya. Here's another problem. His bat size is so small, akala tuloy ng mga ibon, pre siya. <laughs> so, pinagpiestan siya ng isang, ng isang grupo ng mga, ng mga ibon. They started pecking on him like shit. <laughs> Tama-tama, to the rescue si Hinaichi. Akala tuloy ni Hinaichi, ordinaryong paniki ito. Eh, sabi, sabi niya, Ay, salamat si Inaichi. Teka, si Inaichi? Uy, tamang-tama. <laughs> Pag nagkaroon ng pagkakataon, kaagatin ko to sa liig. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Akala to ni Dralo, iuwi na siya ni Inaichi. So, nag-iisip na siya, Hmm, ano kaya itsuro ng bahay nito? Ang gara, ang gara siguro. Kasi virgin eh. Iyon pala, dadalhin muna siya sa Vamp Control Division para i-check kung vampire siya. E buti na lang, nandun si Handa. So, na-warning nga siya si Handa na, Uy, teka, teka muna Handa. Bago ko muna mag- Si, 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 si Tralok to. Eh, mag- Makiride on ko muna sa, ano, sa gusto ko mangyari. Well, todo ride on naman si Handa. Their chief came in to, um, to interfere kasi, uh, naka, mukhang nagkaka- Mukhang, mukha, mukhang, naga, mukhang nag-aaway-aaway na makatuwa niya. Siyempre, concerned siya. So, so, nakita niya yung source ng awayan. Itong, itong paniki nito na ngayon eh, meron ng apat na paa. <laughs> Sabi ng chief, o oh, sige, para matigil, oh, something to respect, para matigil ang away ninyo, akin na to. Ako ang magdedetermine kung vampire nga ito. Sige, nilabas siya. Tinapatan na siya ng, ng chief. Your, your vampire hunter Ronaldo's vampire, aren't you? Ikaw si Dralok, di ba? I know for a fact that Ronaldo has a vampire in his keep and loves video games and dies in no time. Because I read it in a book. Tingin sila pa naong ganon. Ang ano si Dralok? So. They sent Dralok home in a box 
So, nagtaka si Ronaldo kung anong, anong to kahon na to. Binuksan. Ayun nga, si Dralok nga. So, nagkikwento na si Dralok kung ano nangyari sa kanya. Siguro may sensor yon na may hawak si Ronaldo. Ayun, na-track down siya. And eventually, the kids were saved. So, that's how the episode ended. That was the final scene. Excuse me. So let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Pace. Do I need to complain about the pacing of this episode? Ang gande. Although, the second and third is actually a two-part story. Yung pacing ng buong episode, it'll really make you feel that it is, that, well, you're up for some comedy. I don't know um, how and why Dralok finds himself into this situ- finds himself in situations like this. Um, kapalanan ba niya to bilang bilang pinakamahinang vampire sa buong anime or uh, uh, or whatever? <laughs> Talaga, Dralok's um, what you call this? Dralok's puniness fuels the pacing of the episode. Okay? And this uh, and this story proves that. So, no complaints. Talaga, talaga no complaints ako when it comes to the pacing of uh, it comes to the pacing of every episode of this anime so far. Flow naman. Biggest gear shift here of the first story was when the chief um well, finally deduced that this was that this was Dralok. Yung kaibigang vampire ni Ronaldo. Kasi, well, why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang. If the chief is, uh, if the chief of vamp control is already disaware of, of Dralok's presence in Shin Yokohama, then all in good. Yun na nakikita ko. He doesn't need uh, his vice captain or Honda to tell him <laughs> how weak this vampire is. So, he poses no threat to anybody actually. Baka, baka, ka, baka kami pa mag-provide the protection dito sa vampire na to. Ah. Napaka, napaka fragile eh. Na, na, nakapakan lang ni Hinaichi. Namatay na. If you were, um, if you were in the chief's shoes, okay, kayo mga ka-lifestyle, what would you do if you, uh, if you found out uh, the, if you found about the existence of a vampire this week, would you still impose your du- duty to um to uh, to put this vampire in check or not? Okay, comment below. Let's talk about that. The biggest gear shift for um for um for the second and third stories is this. Yung pagkaka salba pichujigiri ki John. If there's anything this gear shift should tell you, it's this. John is so... John has a good heart. Um, his heart is so big, he's now popular amongst everybody in Shin Yokohama. At least for... At least for, uh, for all the characters in this anime. John didn't see him as an enemy in the end. Binigyan pa niya ng thank you gift. Oh, ito lang may alo ko sa yung... Uh, bilang pasasalamat kuha ka na lang ng isa kuha naman ng isa si Chujigiri siguro gutom na talaga uh, that's why everybody in the neighborhood um, put their best effort in looking for John he's this popular already inside this anime inside this this universe we call the vampire dies in no time kaya moral lesson do not underestimate John's big heart. These two gear shits that I saw. Yeah, I got it in uh, I can feel it in my bones that either one of these gear shits will um uh, will play a role down the line in this road to the finale. Yes folks, episode 8 na. So road to the finale feels satayo. Plot wise. Planchado. Hmm. The way they transition from the first two to the two-part story, galing eh. Kasi, ibinalik na si Dralok ng gabing yun. Now, news of the kidnappings 
um, blue wide open the morning after. Kasi parang, parang umaga nag-start to eh. Umaga, uh, nag-meeting yung vamp control at ang mga vampire hunter on, uh, on how to search for this kidnapper because the lives of three children are at stake. Siguro, sabi nga nung vamp control at, mga vamp, at ng vampire guild, ng hunter guild, Teka muna, let's put aside whatever rivalries we have right now. Three children are missing right now. And we both suspect that it's a vampire behind this. Let's, uh, come on, let, let's, let's just work together for the sake of these kids. If the plot was sloppy, hindi natin marirealize ito eh. And we, can, we, will, only take the, we, we will only take this episode superficially. Uy! This plot is well ironed out because, well, we got to deep dive. Kung, uh, kung, kung pinagtagpi-tagpi lang na plot ito, kung maga, yeah, multi-story episode. Hindi po kaya multi-story episode. Wala ka ng seamless factor na ilalagay. So, pace, flow, and plot? They all came together for this episode, mga ka-lifestyle, Patreon. Talagang, Wow. Madhouse has delivered again for this anime. Over-delivered? Pwede rin. Kasi, we were treated to, um, we were treated to, um, a really funny story at, in the first, then in the second and third, medyo, medyo action-packed. Kasi, uh, we, we even saw an anti-hero moment here. In, yan. Yung ginawa ni Chujigiri dito. So, the Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode 8. Deserved. Two thumbs up. Well, personally, I can't, uh, I can't wait for, uh, <laughs> I can't wait for the next episode to, to air. Dahil, uh, well, we got those Road to the Finale feels now. Although, uh, multi-story episode format ang anime na to, you, you still get to feel the, uh, um, the road to the finale. Dahil, I guess we have a, a potential ally in Tsujigiri. Kasi, uh, it's all because of John. Uh, John's big heart is uh, is the real, uh, is the was the real star of this episode. Yeah. We gotta thank John for that. <laughs> so, we can, we can now classify Tsujigiri as a potential ally because he went he went anti-hero in this episode. Eh, although he claims to he claims to do this for for the reason of uh, uh, not being pinned as the uh, as the actual kidnapper and um, whatever his reasons were, we can still classify him now as an anti-hero. Okay, and um, well, if he wants another lesson from Dralok. All in good. <laughs> More funny moments. <laughs> so again, The Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode 8. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime manga lifestyle. Mm. Galing mo, John. Ang galing mo. So, what's next? Walang iba kundi ang drill. We wait for next week and watch the next the next set of stories. Ayaw ko na magsabi ng episode kasi eh, um, unless, uh, unless the next three stories are, are actually three, um, are, is actually a three-part story. Ewan lang natin. So, let's just wait for it. So, in the meantime, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And, hey, Patreon, I hope you enjoyed my, uh, uh, this morning's review of one Piece episode 1000. Yeah. Again, congratulations to Toei and of course the creator of One Piece for wow. 1000 episodes is a rarity these days in anime. Kaya Saludo ako sa inyo. So, sa inyo mga ka lifestyle, I'm sorry, but that review of mine is Patreon exclusive. Kaya enjoy na lang kayo sa mga ibang reviews ng digest na to. Episode 6, well, they've, um, they've
recently bought uh, Leslie's body back to base and syempre preparations were made to uh, well for yeah, possibly his funeral and so yung mga gamit niya um, ginagather na ng mga mga personnel so sumama si Shigure para well, para, para tumulong and uh, right after that nagkanya-kanyang trip yung mga ibang member ng team but eventually <laughs> hindi hindi mapakali so <laughs> they followed Leslie uh, they followed Shigure to Leslie's room ayan uh, in wow in a heartbeat they were able to um, uh, to gather all his things and pack them properly while this was happening uh, tinawag ni tinawag ni Vera si Shigure to her uh, to her office and uh, she just made it clear that the plan's still on and he's free to turn it down pero uh, syempre dala na sa mga naloob and Shigure just just asked her if she's uh, if she's if she's not sad about his death and well being uh, being the tactful broad Vera is she said would you be satisfied if I say yes she could eventually said to that he's going to think about it but Vera just gave him three days a few moments after that uh, Sumire uh, called him ayun may mission daw so they were all there and and wow Vera herself is going to lead the mission. So So they went back to the scene of the crime. Uh Nayon uh Naghina ing kasi kilala pa na ng mga ng ng mga ibang villagers si Vera. Kilalang kilala siya. So uh nagsumbok sila na that their chief has been missing since uh since yesterday. Oi. Oh sige. So sabi niya, okay investigahan namin to. Sinabi lang ni Shigure na they were kidnapped. Kasi, well, sinabi rin ni Larry na it's a possibility. So, yan. Let's look for clues. Sabi ni Shigure. Uh, may nakita silang clue na parang uh, ring. Actually, si Vera ang nakakita nito later on. So, uh, I think she quickly deduced who was responsible for uh, the hostage taking. Uh, ayun nga. Meanwhile, si Hayden, ayun, hawak niya mga hostages because in the opening scene, he took them as hostages. So, eh, sabi na lang niya, okay, let's call it a day kasi uh, tinimbira na siya ni Nadia that the Vera, the Vera Platoon is here with the commander herself. Sabi ko, oy, Sabi niya, oh, trouble to. Okay. Yun pala. Nagpa, nagpakawala, nagpakawala siya ng mga scar dito. So, na-alerto tuloy sila sigure. Well, they, they were almost overwhelmed until, fuck. <laughs> the commander steps in and wreaks havoc. Siya pala yung may dalang, eh, in the opening credits, merong babae doon na may dalang karet. Yup, that is her. So, well, basically, Sinabi niya, get the hostages out of here. Ako nang bahala sa mga to. They were about to, uh, to, to bring the hostages to safety. A shot was fired. Of course, si Hayden. So, hindi niya bababa yung lumabas sa mga hostages. Pero, Kobodo came up with a plan. But, Shigure gave his own variation of it. So, they started firing at the safe, at the safer one. So, nakita ka ni Hayden yun. And he said, Gago. o nga, safe spot nga yun. Pero, limited ang vision ko dyan bilang sniper. Eh, hindi niya alam. Nandun lang si Shigure. Nasa likod niya. He was able to subdue Shigure. Then, Vera comes in to save the day. So, atras bigla si Hayden. And, wow. Um, Congratulations, Hayden. You just met the man who blew your arm off. <laughs> Final scene. They went back to base, of course. Kinwenta na nila at isumire that, well, 
yeah, it still worked out thanks to Shigure. And eventually Shigure said, yes, sige, tuli natin ang plano. And Vera just said, I'll give you the details later. It is now truly the second half of this anime's run. Mukhang magkakainitan na laban nandito because Commander Vera has just stepped into the fight. If not again. So let's break this down ARD style. Pace. It was a slow pace during um, the first half of the episode. Long. Well, actually, the opening scene that was a quick, uh, that was a quick tense moment. So, hindi ko talaga na count yun as uh, na nagpick up yung pace. No, that was really quick. Pero no ipinakita uli ang hostages at si Hayden. That's when the pace began to pick up. It was at an all-time high when, um, when, uh, when those card were were called in to kill the hostages. Yeah, that was the all-time high. Not the um, not the um, uh, not the counter attack by uh, by Shigurin and uh and the team no against uh Hayden no that's not it dito nag all time high yung uh yung uh pagkaka yung pagkakasali ni Vera sa atake sa mga scarred oh i got no complaints when it comes to the pacing of this episode talagang was uh it was properly done it was properly done. Flow naman. First gear shift was the opening scene. Well, uh, nag-decide na si Hayden naman damay ng ibang tao. Well, why did I call it si gear shift? It's a no-brainer. It triggered the episode. Second gear shift was um, was when probably, uh, yeah, when Vera stepped in to uh, to help out, to help out with the hostages, para kumaga, to even the odds, she looked like the Grim Reaper out there. Okay, that's what this gearship will tell you. And another thing, this gearship will tell you is this. It'll actually make you ask this question. Sa anakakuha ng scarred sila Hayden at Nadia, third and final gearship was when um was when Vera asked for this this um, ring in case in a red crystal uh, for kung nag-request na siya na lang magtatago nito why did I call this a gear shift? it really makes you think about Vera's own motives in killing Elsie but nga ba? She may use this as bait to, to drive Elsie out. 50-50. So, these three gearships that I saw, especially the last two, definitely will play a role down the line. Uh, uh, yeah. Once the road to the finale starts next week, those two gearships will play a role. Tagaan nyo sa pato yan. Plotwise. Malinis. The main continuity of the episode is so impeccable here. Dahil, um, well, at the back of her mind, Vera is out for vengeance for, well, for her, for her, clo for her close, con for her closest confidant, si Leslie. Probably one of the plethora of things this this uh, this episode's plot will tell you. Okay, kasi kano kalinis ito. Yeah, deep dive pa more. So pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode, giving us another great one by this anime. So deep insanity, the lost child, episode seven. Let me 
iniinit na ang story nito. Halatahan eh. Because, uh, the two warring factions have made their points clear that well, either way, Elsa is going to die. But, uh, I don't know, kasi I think Shikure couldn't find it less hard to hate Hayden. Kasi, hindi niya pinanggit kay Hayden dito na ano eh, na siya ang uh, siya ang nagpasabog doon sa braso niya. He didn't tell Hayden that uh, he was the one who blew his arm off. <laughs> well, if I were Shikure, I'd, I, I would psych this guy out. I would, I would play mind games with this guy. Kasi, you know, the more arrogant you are, the more prone you are to mind games. Especially if, uh, if someone is ignoring you. Yeah. If you're that arrogant, you, you will crave for attention. And, and, Hayden, yeah, he's arrogant, arrogant as fuck. So if I, yeah, pero suggest ko lang naman tayo. It's just a, uh, a fantasy theory of mine. If I were Shigure, I would play mind games with this guy. I would ask him, hey Hayden, how's the arm? How's the arm that I blew off? So, no matter how skilled a fighter Hayden is, yep. He's gonna lose his temper. Matangkal lang, matangkal lang kaba naman ng na ng braso. Hindi ka magagalit at nakita mo yung taong gumawa sa inon. Imposible hindi ka magalit. We're only human. Kaya I would love to see uh, the next ep how the next episode is going to go down. Talagang um, kapalapalabik na talaga ang deep insanity. Hindi pa kayo tumututok. Tumutok na. Tutok na. At hindi ko sinasabi sa laro nito ha. It's the anime I'm talking about. So again. Deep Insanity The Lost Child Episode 7. Deserves another mic drop. So what are we gonna do now, mga lifestyle? Simple lang. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, if you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload. If you're still on the ARD, okay lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. <laughs>
Uh, kay Maha. So, kumaga, siya na, ang, siya na talaga ang, kumaga, technically, uh, siguro parang part owner status na rin si Maha rito. Kasi sa kanya, iiw- sa kanya iiwanan lahat ni Ilig ito eh. So, but, before they could finalize the, um, the deal, pinopost ni Maha to branch out na ang Orna. It's time for Orna to branch out. So, pinakita niya yung ano, yung location, at napansin kagad ni Ilig ito. This was the location of Maha's family's former business. So, nag-gets kagad ni Lou, ah, ni Lou, or, well, Lou or Ilig would be fine. Kung ano talaga ang pakay ni Maha. She wants um, her family's former business back. Sinabi nila ni Ilig na if you want to mix pers- personal affairs with your with with your with your business ideas, just let me know. Yun lang ang yun lang ang pakiusap ni Ilig kay Maha. Because Bob well, Maha uh, Maha instantly realized that Bob well, Ilig saw through her plan. So, pero it, it's it's okay with Ilig. Time for time for goodbyes. Binigyan ng mga barkada ni ni Maha ng isang going away present si Ilig. It's a it's a very special herbal tea na sa milkyu lang matatagpuan. So binigyan siya. Oh, pasalamat naman siya. Hindi lang yung mga yung mga uh, yung mga anghel ni Maha ang nagbigay sa kanya ng regalo. Even Maha herself. Sa going away present, binigyan siya na parang mini stop doll. Take this, sabi niya, take this with you and wherever you go from, from, from this point on. So, something to that effect. So, okay. Thank you naman siya, no? So, alis na sila sila Lou at Tart. He's, well, he's Lou again. Kasi, tapos na yung two-year two-year period niya. Yung two-year requirement niya. And, well, Nagusap-usap naman sila. Nagusap sila. Lou at Tart. Eh, sabi, na, sabi naman ni Tart, milk you fits you well. Eh, ang sabi naman ni Lou, no? Kumbaga, well, something to this effect. Home is where the heart is. Parang ganun eh. Then, all of a sudden, they they were greeted by wolf monsters. Kasi, nasense kagad ni... Uh, ni ni Lou yung mana nila. So, pinatigil niya sa coachman yung yung karo nila at si Tart naman, pinapasok yung coachman. Lou just gave just gave permission and off Tart went. This is where she um, showed why she's called the lightning quick battle maiden. It only took her three, three to five seconds to take down all these wolf monsters. Gumamit pa, ng, gumamit pa ng magic. And wow, Lou is impressed. Man, sabi niya, wow. Bilis mo na. Sabi niya, something to that effect. So eventually, they, uh, they got home. Sinalubungan si Lou ng nanay niya. May, uh, the usual motherly greeting. Aamuhin, aamuhin yung anak. Oh, I miss you, miss you. But, yeah. It's quite understandable, alright? For uh uh, with, 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 with a mother like Luz. So, kasi sabi ka agad ng nanay ni Lou na inihintay, inihintay, hinihintay na siya ng tatay niya doon sa study room. So, okay, report na siya agad sa tatay niya. This is where um, a heart-to-heart talk started. Kasi, minsan pa lang dumalo si uh, the senior Balor sa kanya one day. Siguro hindi alam ni, hindi alam ni Lou. Um, Balor insisted that um, that Lou leaves the assassination business and just focuses on being a merchant because talagang, well, uh, the senior Balor was really impressed with Lou when he was illing. Talagang, he created a business out of scratch and created his own product pa. So yeah, yeah the Balors were really impressed with Lou. And well, of course, his father is really uh, is really proud of him because he never thought Lou would go that far 
in, in setting up a business. Sinabi lang niya sa mukha ng tatay niya that I choose to be a tuwata de. I want, uh, there's, uh, well, later on in the conversation, he admitted to his father that, well, he's in love with Dia. Kaya pala once a month ka dumadalaw, hayop ka. <laughs> May intention ka pala, visit. <laughs> Because, um, there are some things that, uh, uh, what you call this? There are some things that he wants to do that requires him to be a twata day. And he plans to marry Dia. Kasi kung merchant daw siya, he cannot do this. Hindi ganong kataas ang status ng merchant sa noble. Well, that's got a point. Even in real life, even, uh, even in medieval times, even, I, even in modern times right now, in aristocratic nations. We also, we, all, we, also, we also got recalled here that uh, Dia is the daughter of a count. So, if he were a merchant, baka hindi pumayag ng tatay na, na ikasal si, na, na ituloy ang kasal nila, if ever. And well, his, his father instantly got the point. Natawa na lang eh. eh so, dito na si Beck, he told uh, Lou this. Yeah. Baka rin pala ako mag-isip, ano? Alright. But these were his exact parting shots. Become an aristocratic assassin. So, gumano na lang ang mata ni Lu. <laughs> Kaya siguro, okay. Final scene. So, everything is settled. Talagang gusto pa rin maging tuwata de si Lu. He wants to become assassin. He wants to become an assassin. Binigyan na siya ng kanyang unang trabaho ng kanyang ng kanyang ama. Who's his target? A noble who, uh, well, according to reports to them, was selling military secrets to other kingdoms in exchange for drugs which he sells in their own kingdom. scumbag. So, talaga sinabi ni talaga sinabi ng tatay niya, he's scum and he needs to go. Ikaw na ang bahala diyan. So, and he also said to Lou, kill him your own way. <laughs> Patreon, mga ka-lifestyle, let's break this down now ARD style. Stretch. <clears throat> P Pace Yung pace in ng episode uh, Don't expect any assassination jobs here The only time the, the, pace, the pace picked up in this episode Is when the opening scene And um, The hunting scene By Tart Doon lang pumake up ang pace Because basically Ma was just Ma was just protecting her friends and Tart was basically protecting her master. But we but we but if you've already seen the episode, we now know how capable of killing these two girls are. <laughs> and it's all because of Lou. Magaling na mentor si Lou. Ibig sabihin. <laughs> Walang lolo-lolo lalaki rito. That is one of the uh, one of the many things the pacing will tell you. Hindi naman pumika pang pacing nung nag-uusap yung mag-ama eh. Ang mag-amang tuwata day. No. It was a heart-to-heart -heart talk based on uh, on how the conversation went. It looks like if the kingdom abandons Lu, he'll just simply overtake the kingdom. I think he's ready. In just in case uh, he gets abandoned again, or he gets double crossed again by uh, by by the goddess, by uh, no, that's why he up to now he still has trust issues with this with Ahem or her, yeah, her own. Uh, baka may ulterior motives nga naman to eh. So 
Why trust her completely? I'm more than satisfied with the pacing of this episode. Flow naman! First gear shift here was... I think... When Maha disclosed her proposal to... To, uh, to Lou. Why did I call this a gear shift? Kasi... You now see the specific roles the, the girls are... Um, Lou's angels are now taking. Tart is his personal bodyguard. Si Dia naman ang occult specialist niya. Si Maha ang financial specialist naman niya and information. Financial and information specialist. Because of the network or na uh, yeah, of the so social network or na got from its popularity. Buo ang loob ni Lu na iiwan ang or na kimaha. Second gear ship. The hunting scene. <laughs> Bakit gear ship ito? Simple lang. We now see how much of um, how battle ready, how assassination ready Tark is. Final gear ship was uh, the heart-to-heart -heart talk the father and the son had. I would be an idiot if I don't call that a gear shift. Lou has just affirmed his goal, not, although not vocally, his goal of killing the hero. Right there. And he also said there, I will not get killed again. Kasi, well, he made a mistake the first time in the pilot, pinakita, di ba? Um, he got cocky, so he got shot down. Deads. It's a pivotal gear shift, actually, because. Well, here we go. We're now. We're now down to the final four episodes of this anime. So, how's he gonna do it this time? So, these three gear shifts that I saw. Well, I'm very sure will play a role down the line uh, in the in these final four episodes of the anime. Talagang, they will play a role. Plot-wise, malinis. Although, I'm slowly forgetting that we're still in a backstory. <laughs> Pero hindi. Sa tagal ng run ng anime na to, you wouldn't, uh, you, you would instantly pass this off as the main continuity of the episode. Pero, it has become the main continuity of the episode. Kaya, malinis ang plot. Ako, I got no complaints as to the plot of this episode. Kasi, um, Lou made his proper goodbyes. And, well, Maha and Tart just showed us how capable they are in the art of assassination. Okay? They've shown us again and uh, si Maha, wala si Lou doon. Ito namang si Tart, well, Lou is watching. So, malinis na lang plot. I could not find any, um, well, for the first time, hindi nagpakita si Ahem dito <laughs> with a side story. Kasi minsan na, minsan basag trip din yung mga side story na yan eh. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. And I'm and I am so looking forward to the final four episodes of this anime. I really wanna know how it's going to end. On well, how he's going to kill the hero with this team. So Ansaso Kizoku, episode 8. Spam. Oh <laughs> two thumbs up. Excuse me. There's nothing to expect but a more exciting episode kasi binigyan na siya ng kanyang unang trabaho, si Lu, bilang assassin. So he needs to take out this drug lord um, as clean as possible. Kasi oras na sumablay sila, the kingdom will disown them. So yun ang, yun ang clear explanation sa kanya ng, ng 
ng father niya. Let's see, let's see what he can do as an, as, as an assassin that's going to work on his own for the first time. Probably! Baka isali niya yung tatlo rito. Bottom line, this guy is scum. He needs to go. So again, Ang Satsu Kizoko Episode 8, hindi ko na makalimutan. Oh, two thumbs up. And another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Oh, finally, he's new again. So what do we do now? Patreon, manga lifestyle. Well, simple lang. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Patreon, wait for my next upload. For followers of the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Two part stories. So, Komi and her family uh, decided to visit her grandmother and, of course, her, her, her aunt, her cousin. In invite siya ni ng kanyang cousin na maglaro ng board game. Umuo lang siya and um, suddenly her cousin burst into tears of joy kasi last year, hindi niya nagawa ito. Well, a year has passed and a lot has changed, obviously. Then, uh, tinawag siya na nanay niya to, uh, to, to pay her respects to, to the head of the family was her grandmother. Excuse me. It was Kami's turn now to, uh, to talk to her grandmother. Then, of course, her grandmother asked the usual questions, but a uh, grandmother would ask, How's school? Have you made friends there? And, mm -hmm. uh, right after she, right after Kami answered the, uh, the uh, did, you make, did you make friends there question, so, pina... Eh, syempre, lambing ng, lambing ng lola. Pina... Higa siya doon sa lap ng lola niya. Eh, syempre, apo. Then, all of a sudden, nag... Mukhang bad timing yung pagkaka... pagkaka-vibrate pagkaka ng phone niya. So, bigla-bigla, uh, in-assume ng lola niya na, hmm, sino yan? Si Tatano yan, ano? So, at, at that moment, well, Tatan was watching TV, bigla siya nabahing. So, that, that's a sign na, uh, na may, may nakaalala sa kanya. And of course, sa Japan, when summer is about to end, may summer festival. Not yan. We, we've seen, uh, we've seen this kind of, uh, this kind of a setting in every, in almost every anime that we have seen. I, yeah. I'm sure you'll agree with that, Mama Lifestyle Patreon. So, Comic Can, Comic Can Communicate is no exception. This too has a summer festival scene. Final scene. Actually, the final scene was another. Uh, it is another story, but within the two part, the second two part story. Because this was uh, the day after where uh, Komi, Najimi, and you guessed it, Yamai. Uh, we're invited over to Tadano's own house. So, for the first time, yep, we got to we got to see how Tadano's living uh, living space looks like. They were already um, assessing kung uh, naging fruitful ba yung summer, naging enjoy, naging enjoy ba na summer ito. And na, napansin nilang lahat na si Komi ay medyo umiiyak na. Paiyak na pala actually. Eh, siyempre, naging concern silang lahat. Uy, Komi! Ba't kumiya? So, sinulat siyang ni... Eh, well, with notepad in hand now. Sinulat niya. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm... I'm... I'm fine. Uh, something to this effect, she wrote in that... On that notepad. I just wish the summer vacation wouldn't end. Parang ganun. Kasi, it is the first time down na... Nag-wish daw siya na hindi matapos ang summer vacation na to. Tuwa naman, tuwa naman sila na. Pero, uh, except na Jeannie. Because she really wants the summer vacation to end. Dahil, ni isang homework na inassign sa kanila, wala siyang ginawa. Sa matanay mga iba, tapos na. 
Si si Tata no nakakalakati pa lang. Sabi nga ni Sabi nga ni Tata no. Kana Kana mo reklamo, gawin mo na lang. <laughs> so let's break this episode down AR this time. Sorry mga ka-lifestyle chat at Patreon because um <clears throat> I had a little choking incident um kanina. When I was uh, having dinner, hindi ko pa nga hindi ko pa nga tapos yung dinner ko eh. And the only way to, the only way to remedy that is honey. So talagang uh, nawala na nawala na ako ng gana ngayon. And so habang wala pa akong gana, I did this for you. Pace. The pacing of both sets of um of stories maganda. Eh. Okay? It's um comic I communicate is slowly developing this knack of um 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 airing slow but satisfying episodes it has a slow but satisfying pacing hindi siya dragging hindi rin siya uh yeah hindi rin siya nakakainis the slowness of the pacing of both stories um will will make you feel satisfied kasi may uh, may naka-office na naman si Komi because uh, she was able to speak her mind out this is probably the, uh, yeah the second time that she that she did it this is only the second time kaya kaya cheer mode ka na tuloy kasi because kung binilisan nila ang PC ng episode na to wala si Rae eh. si Rae yung ano eh yung uh, makita mo si Komi na yung uh, yung uh, kung maga nakaisang syllable na parang gusto mo na sabihin sige pa Komi sige pa isa pang syllable yan yan sige, sige pa kaya kaya mo yan galing 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 gagan ng gagan ng anak agad eh if the pacing were were fast do you appreciate yung ano eh yung uh the um what you call this the grind we can we can we can, we can describe it as such the grind Komi has to go through just to speak her mind out kaya tama yung uh yung ginamit na pacing for this episode as i was saying Slow but satisfying ang pacing ng episode na to as a whole. So, no complaints. Flow naman. Let's just say the biggest gear shift of the first uh, two-part story was um, was, the, uh, was that scene where uh, Komi was talking to her grandmother and nung sinabi ng nung, nung sinagot yung tanong ng grandmother niya na did you make friends in school? Well, then, of course, uh, Komi said yes. Why did I call this a gear shift? If you would deep dive into into the grandmother's line of questioning, may mahalata ka. Aware ang kanyang lola sa kanyang communication disorder. Sa communication disorder ni ni Komi. Let's say it's just a theory, but this gear shift made me deep dive into uh, the grandmother's awareness of uh, of Komi's disorder. The biggest gear shift for ano naman for the what you call this for the second two-part story is when Komi uh, was uh, had no choice but to but to actually talk to Tadano. Kasi yan, wala siyang notepad. And, um, yeah. Very limited lang yung uh, yung chances niya na talagang maisulat yung saloobin niya. So, she had no choice but to, but to, to actually talk to Tadano. Bakit ko tinawag ako na gearship? <laughs> No-brainer. The main pro tag just, um, just talked again. After so many episodes, the I think probably episode three pa yata, nung kulis yung kulis yung nagsalita talaga. 
Mm. Yung as in yung face to face na nagsalita, nagsalita sa habang may kaharap siyang tao. If that ain't a gear shift to you guys, I don't know what is. Alright? So, these two gear shifts that I saw will play a role down the line in uh, uh, in, the ro- in the road to this uh, anime's finale. Kasi episode 8 na. The road to the finale has just started for this anime. Blood lies. Blanchado. Of course, uh, multi-story episode. You gotta have a um, a well organized and a well well organized, well ironed out plot. Because you have to you have to put, you have to consider transitioning it. Yeah, okay lang yon. Okay lang yung uh, yung transitioning between uh, between stories. Okay lang siya. Komi can communicate is a uh, is a great example of how. Uh, of how animation studios transition uh, between uh, between stories in multi-story episodes. Yeah. Well, OLM has a lot of experience regarding that. And another one is Madhouse. Of course, with the vampire dies in no time. Uh, okay lang yung okay lang yung pagkaka-iron out ng ng buong plot ng episode na to. No complaints also. So, pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode. So, Call Me Can Communicate Episode 8. Hmm. Sir. Two thumbs up. Excuse me. All I have, Mike. <clears throat> this is probably all, um, already the anime where I've seen uh, a lot of character developments for uh, for its main product. I've seen at least two character, two big character development moments per episode in this anime for the main product. Okay, uh, ano eh, talagang you would. But I've been telling I've been telling you guys this ever since I started reviewing this anime. Uh, you would really root for the main protag to. Um, to to get over her communication disorder. Kasi, uh, with a psychosocial take two. With a psychosocial disorder like this, all it takes is um constant practice. You don't, you don't have to train. Just try try talking for at least um once or twice a day. Yeah, that's a good start. Yung ginawa rito ni Komi na uh, kinausap niya na harap-harapan si Tadano without using her cell phone, her notepad. Wala, talagang she just used her mouth to, to talk to Tadano. Uh, that, for me, that's a big start. Kasi she has a communication disorder. It's a baby step to you. It's a big step uh, in my point of view. Kasi, well, you know, she has to get over this kasi she's almost 18 na. Mahirap na kung uh, she, if she doesn't do something about this by the time she turns 18, it might uh, carry over into adult life. Eh? So, I think we're going to see more character development moments from the main protag. Yun ang in-expect ko ngayon, lalo natin ngayon, road to, the, road to the finale na. Will we be able to see Komi speak her mind out straight? Yung, hindi siya mag stutter hindi siya mag-aalangan whatsoever. Talagang, yeah, I got faith. <laughs> I got faith in Komi. How about you? So again, Komi can communicate Episode 8 Thumbs up Another 2 thumbs up for this anime So what do we do now? Well, of course, the thrill We wait for next week And watch that episode 
If you're now on Patreon, wait for my next upload. If you're still on the ARD, okay lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. On the way na sila Yo at uh, Matamune to Osorizan to of course to rescue Anna and to to take out this giant demon that uh, that has been yeah that has been practically bugging her since birth technically eh, according to Matamune uh, I'm already dead and my Foryo was almost used up but if you use this technique for a while magagamit mo ang ginamit kong oversoul nun yung ginamit kong weapon nun against this giant demon so ayun na uh, Yo is there he faces the giant demon and who comes in to watch si Ana and wow talagang uh I've never seen an anime character this angry before, uh, much less a female anime character. And uh, all of a sudden, Matamune uh, integrated with Yo. So, uh, nagulat yung... <laughs> nagulat yung giant, giant demon, nakapag-spirit integration. So, nakasya ko yung, yung oversoul. Labas na yung oversoul ni, ni Matamune. Hawak na ni Yo. And, well, basically, uh, he's yo yo starts his dirty work on the great on on the on the giant demon. Something to this effect. Sinabi ni Ana do sa giant demon. It's you who's going to die tonight. So whoop, nagalit ang giant demon. Naglabasan ng nagpalabas ng maraming minions para patayin si Ana at si yo sa bay. But yo will have none of that. All the uh, all the demon sprites, the the giant demon called, wala. It's it's a pile of bodies. It's a pile of demon bodies. Talaga, pinatay lahat ni Yo ito. Then turns his, Yo turns his attention again to the giant demon. Takes him out. After one week, he, Yo decided to go back to uh to to go back home. So, iiwanan na si Ana. So, binigyan siya ng going away present ng kanyang lola. So, ito. And, while he was on the train, ito kung lahat niyang ganun, it was, a, it's a, it's three poems written by Matamune. So, it was actually, it was, it was actually Matamune's final gift to the original How. Kumbaga, parang going away, parang goodbye letter. Ibig sabihin na parang uh, kakalas na siya kay, kay, kay Hao. So, original na Hao. While he was reading this, si Ana pala nakasakay din. So, well, binati siya ng sampal. <laughs> in typical, uh, in typical Ana fashion, okay? So, uh, kaya na pala suma, kaya na pala sumakay ng trend na yun si Ana. Uh, just she w just wanted to thank Yo for what uh for what Yo has done for her. Despite uh, her um her rejections, despite the slaps, yeah. <laughs> despite the slaps from hell. <laughs> Yo said a proverbial you're welcome to Ana. Then uh, over the next station, buma, uh, yeah, bumaba na si Ana. So, from that point onwards, talagang bumaling na si Yo sa, sa, kanyang, sa kanyang hometown. I already forgot his hometown. So, for a while, uh, talagang naghiwalay muna ng landas si, si Yo at Ana at that point. I think it was, I think the only time they, uh, they saw each other again was during episode 2. Uh, kung kailang mga 15 years old na sila pareho. And, uh, well, we all, we all know how how Ana looked like in episode 2. Talagang talagang astig ang itsura eh. Talagang, talagang yandere ang itsura. <laughs> Pero, 
um, definitely she has more control now over her powers. Talagang, yeah, talagang sama na rin siya ngayon. And, wow. Um, it's quite... Well, the final scene was actually Anna saying uh, goodbye to you in uh, the moment she... Uh, the moment she stepped out of that train. Yun talagang... Yun talagang final scene doon. And, I don't know why... I don't know why I find the final scene sad. Kasi, ano ko naman, ano kung nangyari sa episode 2 eh. Uh, nakita naman sila uli eh. Because, you had to... You had to train really hard now for the shaman fight at that point. Sa episode 2. But anyway... While my dog is sound asleep, let's break this down AR this time. Okay? Pace. The pace was already tense at the start of the episode. Kasi the atmosphere of um the prospect of that demon totally killing Anna is it, it's right there. Talaga, I could feel it over my head when the episode started. From the moment Yo killed the giant demon, the pacing uh, toned down uh, in increments. As I, as I was analyzing it, and I, as I'm analyzing it now, justified yung ganitong pacing. Kasi tingnan nyo, they, Anna and Yo were up against a really, a really strong demon. And Matamone had to sacrifice himself Para lang matalo ito. And uh, through the pacing of this episode, yung 1,000 plus na tinalo ni, ni Yonon in one fell swoop na mga demon sprites, naging beads pala yun. So, pinag-ipon-ipon lahat pala ng lolo ni Yoyon and turned it into the um, the medium Ana has now. That's one of, that's, that's some of the many things the pacing will make you realize. And, um, if it were fast from start to finish, pangit yung pangit na magiging ending ng mini arc na to. And you wouldn't feel the rather sad ending sa final scene. Eh, hindi, hindi, ano eh, hindi ganong kalaki ang magiging impact kung, kung fast all throughout ang pacing ng episode na to. I got no complaints uh, sa pacing ng episode na to. Talagang, justified siya that uh, incrementally from that point in uh, from that point in the episode kasi we were up for uh, we were up for a sad ending very profound pacing pwede rin flow naman first gear shift here was when yo and matamune did that soul integration yun para na Para maging oversold na rin si Matamune. I call that a gear shift. Bakit? Because, wow! At 10 years old, nakagamit na ng oversold si Yo. So, we should no longer be surprised as to um, how, as to how fast Lo, Yo learned what well, we can now say relearned the Ultra Senji Ryaketsu. So, lumalabas ngayon through this gear shift that Matamune is an important character in this uh, in this reboot. Second gear shift was when Yo finally takes down the giant demon. Excuse me. <coughs> so, why did I call this a gear shift? Well, simply lang. Yo just made his first demon kill. And, well, sa tingin ko, uh, uh, this is a huge confidence booster for Yo. And, uh, it truly set him on the path to, um, to making it a goal to become the Shaman King. Final gear shift. Yo and Anna said their first goodbyes. Um... May binitawang pa ng pangako dito si Yo na uh, uh, we have no idea of yet. 
Masa sinabi na ni Anna when the train left, I'll be holding on to that promise of yours. Another reason why I call this a gear shit is this was probably the event that currently set off the the current Shaman King timeline. It's totally surprising. Talagang masusurpresa ka. Kung ano yung uh, if you look back at this episode, talagang masusurpresa ka kung ano yung ang laki ng inimprove ni Ana at that from from that moment onwards. That's what this gear ship was all will also tell you. So these three gear ships that I saw plot wise meron din yung backstory sequence pero ano lang eh parang diorama style lang steals no movement that was just three or four seconds and you could not consider um, the uh, what you call this the flashback sequence from probably 15 or 20 minutes ago uh timeline ng mini arc na to as yeah as a non-factor probably for the first time in this mini arc malinis ang plot hmm believe it or not mga ka-lifestyle Patreon <laughs> kaya again no complaints when it comes to the plot of this episode sad ending and uh, I thought they'll just get it over with eh yung sa ending ng mini arc na to but nope it ended sadly so Shaman King 2021 episode 33 sino pala to to thumbs up the three gear shifts that we saw in this episode have already played their role actually in this uh, in this entire anime pinakita lang kasi uh, well I, I completely understand now. It's an all-important arc. Kasi dito in-explain niyo kung paano sila nagkita ni... kung paano sila unang nakakilala ni Ana and um, how basically was able to use the, the Ultra Sanjiria Ketsu for the first time. Kasi emergency. So, and now that he has fully understood the technique, you can now see yung you can now see the uh, well you, we've already seen the precedent but you can now see yung kung paano na develop yung current mindset ni yo makikita mo dito sa mini arc na to uh, well like, I, like I've been telling you guys for the past 4 or 5 episodes 10 year old yo it's a far cry from the yo now uh, a more mature we now see a more mature more calm and definitely a more powerful yo asakura we can now see na well so what if you resign from the shaman fight <laughs> you can always kick yo you can always kick house ass later especially if he becomes the shaman king you can challenge for his throne. Pwede naman siguro yun. Iaalaw, iaalaw naman yun, di ba? Kaya, I'll be looking forward now to what's, uh, what's going to happen uh, from episode 34 onwards. Talaga looking forward na ako. Kasi, naiintindihan ko na kung ano ang mindset ni Yo ngayon. It's because of this mini arc. Kaya, uh, for anybody who's uh, what you call this who is still missing out on the Shaman King reboot ay nako kayo you got poor taste so again Shaman King 2021 episode 33 two thumbs up another two thumbs up for this wow this great we will mark lifestyle so well Gets gonna, gets the gets gonna. Oh, so what do we do now? We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch that next episode. 
If you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload. But if you're still on the ARD, that's okay. Wala na ako masamang tima. Wala na ako masamang tinapay sa inyo eh. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Merong um Meron tayong nalaman dito sa episode na to na medyo nagulantang tayo because it was the opening scene. Rebel just disclosed in this episode that uh, when when he found Saki, Saki was committing suicide. One scene, sinabi ni Saki na kila sa dalawang angel, si uh, Rebel at si Nase na uh, magpakalayo muna hanggang umaga because gusto niyang saluhin si Mirai right now para kausapin. Well, sumunod naman yung dalawang angels. Okay, sige. Doon sinabi ni Saki that she wanted to die. And well, uh, uh, there was a shock look on Mirai's face. Pero hindi siya kumaharap uh, kumaharap kay Saki para ipakita yon And when Saki flew out of there, uh, out of that, out of that cramped room, and well, basically, pinagbigyan niya si Saki. Drops pero hindi, <laughs> hindi yung pala hindi ka, hindi pala kaya ni Saki. Binita mo na siya ni Mirai nun. but uh, it was Saki who, who grabbed on again to Mirai. Doon niya sinabi na uh, I'm sorry uh, uh, so to this effect I, I dragged you into this somewhere uh, between these scenes sinab may well, may inamin may inamin din naman si Saki ng kanyang kasalanan kay Mirai because when they were kids uh, sinabi na Ano, friends tayo forever. Umuo naman si Saki. But, um, days later, nakisama pa siya sa pambubuli kay Mirai noon. When they were, they, elementary pa lang sila noon. So, uh, nakiride on siya sa bullying kay Mirai. Every time, because, Mirai had this, um, uh, this, uh, victim name of, um, uh, kake, kake, Kakehashi Pigsty. So, when every time he would walk down the hallway to well, to the to their classroom, everybody would do this. As if na mabahong baboy siya. So, para hindi siya, siguro para hindi siya mabuli naman, eh, sumaki, sumasa, sumasakit parati si Saki. Nakikigamit din. Nakita pala ni Saki ito yung actual na pagtalon ni Mirai from the top of that building to to, to, to kill to kill himself. So, yung nakita niya yon in um utter disgust for herself, for self pity. So, she went out at sea and tried killing herself too. So, tumaga Kung natuloy sila pero talagang damay-damay na. Thank- Thankfully, they got angels. Yun nga. Rebel uh, saves Saki. And of course, we all know what Nasid did to Mirai. Despite all that, um, Mirai... Bali, wala kay Mirai. <laughs> so, they went back to... to, to the room, to that room, their office, <laughs> the office of the God Candidates. And the next day, nung, nung bumalik si Nanato to, uh, to discuss things about Metropolitan, of course, bigla-biglang uh, nagulat yung, biglang, bigla-biglang naging proactive si, ano, si, si Saki. Ngayon, eh, medyo nagka, medyo umiraw yung pagka-dirty-minded ni Nanato, yun na si Mirai. 
May nangyari ba kagabi? <laughs> eh, sabi naman, ang sagot naman ni Mirai. Sort of. <laughs> Final scene. So, what? Um, Naruto is at home with his entire family. Eh, sabi ng... Eh, nag-request yung panganin niyang, panganin niyang babae. Uh, gawan siya ng dress para sa kanyang piano recital. Na, pero nakita niya na, is that the dress for my piano recital? Yung nakita ko doon. And uh, Naruto said, yes! It'll be done in no time. Don't worry. So, he reassures his daughter that it'll be... It'll be done in time for her for her recital. His daughter suddenly um, uh, was thinking ahead of herself. Uh, para sa mga yung yung kasi mayro pang wedding gown na uh, we no work on si na nato don. It's probably for uh, it's probably for his uh, for his fashion company. So uh, para sa akin ba yon? Para sa akin ba yon, Daddy? Uh, kin kina ba ang panyo ng pagkasal? <laughs> so Uh, of course, the father is overwhelmed with these kinds of questions. Hindi pa naman dapat talongin ng kanyang anak ito. Um, uh, he just he just hugs his daughter. He carries and hugs his daughter. Eh, on the side, uh, on the side, napayap na lang yung asawa niya. Kasi, uh, well, we know what's going we know what's going to happen to Nanato once his. Uh, Uh, tawag dito once his time on earth is up kasi we all know na cancer patient si Nana to and uh, he just went up to that room and just breaks down kasi he couldn't answer all the questions his daughter has for him at that point so let's break this down AR this time face The only time the pace the pace picked up was when, yeah, Mirai uh, dropped Saki. Sakto lang yung pacing actually ng episode nato because it was a sort of a no it was not wasn't a sort it was definitely a uh, character development episode for Saki. The pacing will also make you feel that um, Mirai is actually helping. Saki get over this this funk she's in so many things the pacing will make you realize dito pa dito pa lang in this episode talagang sapat yung pacing para makapag para makapag deep dive kay if the pacing were uh, were slightly fast dan kung kung baguhan ka kung baguhan ka pa lang anime fan you're You probably won't uh, won't be able to deep dive it, because you'll just you'll just be you'll just be watching this episode, not uh, deep dive into it. Kaya swak ang ano ang pace ng episode nito. Flow naman. First gear shift here was nung inamin ni Saki ng kanya mga kasalanan kay kay Mirai. Then uh, she she got so fed up with life that she really wanted to kill herself. The the moment na nakita niyang tumalon si Biraido sa building na yon, why did I call this a gear shift? Like I said a while ago, ang daming ni reveal ni Saki dito na issues, and it's a it's an eye opening gear shift. We now know how. Uh, Emotionally compromised, si Saki. Napabigat na gear shift. Second gear shift was when you probably guessed it. Mirai gave in to Saki's wish to die, so nilipad niya. Kaya nga binitawan yung ganon. Then at the moment na binitawan niya, kumapit naman ganon si Saki. Well, that's what she realized. Na hindi niya kaya talaga. Hindi niya talaga kaya magpakamatay. And she still wants. Uh, she still has the desire to live. But why did I call this a gear shift? Well, 
You can call this a uh, a hallelujah moment for Saki. It's also a pivotal gearship in their relationship. Bakit? Kasi alam na ni uh, after this gearship paniwalang paniwala na si ano si Saki that yung sinasabi parati ni ni Mirai na he would rather get bullied than bully anyone. Totoo pala to, hindi siya, hindi siya, he's not, he's not joking. I don't know, I don't know about you, mga ka-lifestyle, uh, Patreon. For me, that's a gear shift. Final gear shift was, hmm, I think the scene we're in, um, Uryu is still trying to figure out how, um, how Mirai and Nanato one-upped him. <laughs> if you ask me, folks, this is the gear shift that tells you that the main antagonist is getting desperate. Talagang masasabi mo na naratel si Metropoliman. Probably the most satisfying gear shift I've, I've seen so far in this anime. So these three gear shifts that I saw, they will, well, at least two of them will play a role down the line in this anime. Pero, mainit ng istorya, no? Episode 8 pa lang. Plot-wise, malinis. Although, there were one or two backstory sequences here, pero, hindi. You just couldn't count out the one by the one that involved uh, both Mirai and Saki when they were uh, when they got this four leaf clover and tapos meron pag dilaw na ladybug doon sa ibabaw vital yung backstory sequence na yun yung that particular backstory sequence if it weren't for a plot this clean we would do uh, longer deep dives we wouldn't do uh, all this we wouldn't formulate theories and of course we wouldn't realize that may kasalanan din pala si Saki kay Mirai only a plot this clean will make you will make you think this way for uh, for this episode yeah no complaints <laughs> dami ko ng deep dive eh. <laughs> so pace flow and plot we all came together for this episode giving us another good one from this anime. Wow. Pinabibili ba ko ng Platinum End? So, Platinum End Episode 8? Diretso. Two thumbs up. Let me have my... So, what would we expect now? Um, now, uh, with Saki... Uh, totally sold on the idea of stopping Metropoliman. Well, we can now say that they're a, uh, they're starting to be a well-oiled machine na, yung kanilang, yung kanilang grupo. More likely, more likely that's going to happen. And, will they give problems to Metropoliman again? Or, Uryu Kanade in real life? Definitely. Lalong lalo na si Mirai. Now that he has um, the full backing of uh, of his love interest, lalo siyang gaganahan talaga. Lalaki yan eh. <laughs> Lalaki yan eh, mga ka-lifestyle. And of course, uh, si Revel, yung angel ni Saki, eh, pusig now because of uh, what she, what he now sees in Saki, but kaya siguro. Oh, I need to work on my own skills as well. Mukong kilang ko ng mukong kilang kilang ko na talaga magin first track para mabigyan ko na ng wings ang aking god candidate. Things are looking up for the for the good guys of this anime. So expect more. We should expect more great things from this anime. So again. 
Platinum End Episode 8. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Saki, 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 Saki. What do we do now? Of course, the thrill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. If you're now on Patreon, just wait for my next upload. If you're still on the ARD, exclusively, no problem. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Hmm. So the episode opened with um, Moroha um, attacking the the full moon raccoon dog was just been uh, unleashed by this uh, Shogun Mamiana. So, kaya pala palang uh, nagulat si Moro ha. Uh, Shogun used a counter move against her Crimson Backlash wave. It's called World Reversal. Kaya ang nangyari, imbis na sila ang target ng, ng Crimson Backlash wave, bumalik si Moro ha. Siya ang natamaan. The biggest story here is now on from Setsuna's end kasi they're now um, setting the plan into motion to to contain these flame bulls ang magiging bait si Setsuna Hisui at si Kirara so ayun kumagat naman si Mayonaka pinasugod yung mga flame bulls sa, sa, sa kanilang tatlo they went into this gate tapos pag ganun parang uh, yeah para siyang ano eh para siyang tunnel improvised na tunnel parang ganun yun so they were leading all these flame bulls into this uh, this in, this bamboo tunnel that they made parang ganun then uh, eventually ayun may, marami sila natalong Marami silang napatay na flame bulls at that uh, at that moment. Uh, were because that um, bamboo tunnel led to a deep ravine. Na oh, tangi si Kirara na makaka ang makakaligtas doon. And well, these are low flight demons. Kumaga, kapag kapag, uh, kapag lumipad na sila at that altitude, babagsak sila. We soon found out in this episode that Goro is uh, wow is the son of Mayunaka. So, well, okay. So, pinakinggan muna siya ni, you know, ni Setsuna on his side, uh, his side of the story. So, kinwento niya, he used to be the local deity of the place. Si uh, si, Mirahu, si Mirahuna See, his, his actual name is uh, Mirahuna. Right there and then, nasense ka agad ni Setsuna na, mayroong, na parang nagva-vibrate yung yukari no tachikiri niya. And it, it's telling her something. And all of a sudden, uh, nag, nag-iba ang paligid. Nag-iba ang paligid. So, kumaga, the yukari no tachikiri is showing her how um, how Mayonaka's uh, thread of fate started. It's tied to to the five to the blessing of the five grains. Nakikusap na si Mayonaka na can you can you do this for me? Sinabi ni Setsu na I'll try. Biglang biglang nagkulay pula <laughs> yung uh, yung blade. So isa na ibig sabihin nun. Setsu na needs to cut this now. Mayonaka is now free of the bond he has, he still has with the blessing of the five grains. Pero, eventually, nakita na kung ano talaga ang dulo ng thread of fate niya. It's uh, Oharu's body, which has been used as a um, uh, Yoshiro or a medium for the blessing of the five grains. Eh, Ang gulang nga ni Goro eh. Ha? Teka. Baka kayo na nanay ko yun ah. Ba't nandiyan yan? Case solved. Hindi pala si Mayonaka ang problema. 
kundi ang, kasakay, ang kasakiman ng village na to. Uh, eventually, the village becomes poor again. Nawala lahat ang ani nila. And they could pay the demon slayers for, for their services. Final scene. Well, nagsorry naman yung mga demon slayers for yung mga ibang yung mga demon slayers ng hindi katropa nila Setsuna na or for accusing Setsuna of uh, being in cahoots with Mayunaka uh, or being a sellout. And, well, nagsorry naman sila. And um, hoping na makatrabaho sila uli. Then, right after this happened, may naramdaman na naman si Setsuna. Pero hindi niya maintindihan kung ano ang feeling na to. What is going on? Let's break this down now, ARD style. Pace. The pace picked up nung uh, the moment uh, hindi, a few scenes after the start yung side ng nung side ng store ni Setsu na. So, doon talaga nag-pick up ang pace because uh, the Flame Bulls are they're about to attack again pero en masse and under Mayonaka's command. So, talagang uh, all-out war na. Uh, importante pa lang mangyayari dito because uh, it is through well, the pacing that made me realize that it, Setsuna just made her first thread cut with the Yukari no Tachikiri. successful to. If the pacing were um, were uh, were predominantly fast or slow, hindi natin ma-appreciate yung character development ni Setsu na rito. Flow naman! Well, um, the biggest gear shift here that I saw was, yun nga, for the first time, uh, hindi, Setsuna makes her first successful thread cut with the Yukari no Tachikiri. I would be an idiot if I, do, if I did not call this a gear shift kasi character development gear shift to. This will serve her in the long run. Especially uh, sa pag-save nila sa nanay niya, si Rin. This gear shift is a big step for, mo, for Setsuna. Let me explain with the plot. planchado but uh, although um, Setsuna's side of the story took up took up uh, took up half of the episode it's still three stories you have to uh, you have to transition them very carefully so para maintindihan ng viewer na These three stories are happening at the same time. Although, um, Setsuna's is the most important one. Kasi, ayun nga. She was able to make her first thread cut with the Yukari no Tachikiri. And it had to be uh, a thread involving a local deity. Ganong ka, tindi, ganong ka, ganong ka high stakes yung ginawa niyang thread cut dito. Yung sides nila... Towa at Moroha, they, they've reached the dead end right now. So, natural. Magagahol ngayon ang oras ng episode dun sa storya ni... Sa, sa side ni Setsuna. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Yasha Himi the second act, episode 9. deserve two thumbs up natural talaga eh kasi you've, if you've been working as a team for for so long pag nagkanya-kanya kayo mahihirapan kayo eh so talagang uh, right now nangangapa sila Towa at Moroha but it's obvious Setsuna's side of this three-way story is now over so she'll probably get back to, uh, to the business of, uh, of freeing her mother from, from Zero's curse. 
sila makakagawa nito. And uh, with Zero tracking down her sister, I truly feel na talagang mukhang mapapadali pa, mapapadali pa trabaho niya. If Toa is able to take down Zero, mukhang ano to eh, uh, it might do it might do harm. If Zero is not killed properly, baka madamay si Rin. And I, I'm sure Toa is aware of that. Kasi buhay din ang nanay niya ang nakasalali dito. Yeah, mukhang there's, a, there's again something to look forward to in uh, in season 2 of the uh, of the official Inuyasha spin-off. Yeah. I'm looking forward again. I'm looking forward again. So again, Yasha Hime the second act, episode 9. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Wow. Congrats, Setsuna. You just mastered the Yukari no Tachigiri. So what do we do now? It's 11.45 p.m. But we still do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. So if you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload. But if you're still on the ARD, all fine and dandy. Enjoy the, re enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Long story short, Ishinome is up to his own, uh, his own dirty tricks again. So, uh, after Teruto gets a um, gets a proper uh, memory reorientation from from a family friend named I, the local baker, uh, he gets abducted by this guy. So, that. It's uh, episode 5 all over again. Pero dito natin alaman kung paano, ano eh, kung paano nag uh, kung paano nagsimula ang losing streak ni ni Teroto kay kay Kika. Uh, well, Teroto was the one who taught Kika the game of build divide and was really and right there he was really good at it. But one day for the first time Tinalo siya ng kapatid niya. Then, uh, he entered into this funk. Yeah. This, yeah, losing streak. So, he lost uh, in as many games to Kika as he can recall. Then, uh, came to such point na nawalan siya ng, uh, nawalan siya ng ganang maglaro. Nawalan siya ng ganang sa kapatid niya. Then, uh, came the time when their parents divorced the divorce was final so the siblings had to separate Kika asked for another battle with Teroto so ang napagkasunduan doon sila maglalaban sa, sa shrine kung saan sila naglalaro and well on the uh, on the day itself Nawawala bigla yung uh, yung deck ni Kika. And uh, well, the culprit is Teroto himself. So, I don't know uh, if you can believe Ishinomi's mind games all the time, but Teroto accepted this as truth. And uh, by the time Ishinomi let him go, ayun nga, but may pawang katotohanan yung mga isiniwalat ni ni Ishinomi dito tungkol kay Teroto and well he, Teroto just started digging uh, under this tree until he stumbled this on this box na ayun doon nga nakalagay yung original deck ni Kika so Teroto started going into this accountability phase and he said, basically said, it's all my fault. All of this. He just came back home, of course, to Sakura in uh, Hiyori, waiting for, waiting for him there. And um, as a, uh, what you call this, 
an I'm sorry gift. He presents three chips to to Sakura. So according to Sakura, that means only one thing. Two more, and he can challenge the king. Final scene. Well, uh, Higuma is uh, overly concerned about the status of Kika's health. Kasi binibase ito para sa, sa isang parang lifeline na gano'n na nag-flicker eh. E sinabi ng isang maid nila that Kika doesn't have much time. And he said, yeah, he's well aware of that. So, ang hinihintay lang talaga si Tero to na tumuntong dun sa sa palas and challenges Kika to a battle. The king. Let's break this down ARD style. Base. Well, um, the pacing of this episode picked up the moment Ishinome abducted Teroto. But, uh, in reality, it became uh, a slow but excruciating pace. Kasi, umpisa pa ng episode, ano ne, mabaga na ang pacing. Uh, well, I just used the term pick up kasi medyo uh, medyo naging ano talaga rito naging uh, it's rather tough to watch kasi you would feel for the main protag to to go through this self-pity face courtesy of Ishinome we, we, we all know how this son of a bitch deals uh, uh, does business with uh, with the enemy pero if there's anything that this that the pacing of this episode will will make you think it's this again what is the deal with Ishinome ano ba ang napapala niya sa pagmamind games niya kay Tero to kaya well no complaints with regards to the pacing flow naman well first gear shift here was of course yung um yung the yung scene we're in I and Teroto were, were talking about uh, the old times. Why did I call this a gearship? Well, simply lang. This is the right way of restoring a person's memories. Have someone close to the family get uh, involved and yeah, make them simply make them remember of uh, of their past. This was a vital gear shift for the main pro tag kasi someone close to the family has helped him remember has helped him uh, restore his memories a bit Ito ang tama Ito yung natural So if it weren't for Ishinomi's uh, interference ang ayos ni baka dito pa lang sa scene na to Maalala na lahat ni Tero to. Second gear ship was of course, well, Ishinomi abducts Tero to for, for his own enjoyment. Halatay. He enjoys playing mind games with the main protag. And sooner or later, Tero to needs to dispose of him. Not just deal with him, dispose of him. This is what this gear ship will try to... This is what this gearship will tell you. Okay? But why did I call this a gearship? No brainer! Month lifestyle. Patreon. It's it's the type of gearship that will um that will make you realize that well Kika is the least of Teratos concerns right now. It's this guy. Third gearship and final gearship was well, the post credit scene. Final scene. What, what does this gearship... What this gearship is telling me is this. Talagang! Ganun ba katid niya ang sense of urgency nyo para maglaban uli ang magkapatid? That's why I call it a gearship. Because it made me think as to what's, uh, what's going to happen down... Yeah. Kasi we're now on the road to the finale of uh, 
of the for, uh, of season one of Build Divide Code Black. We all know Build Divide Code Black is a split course series. So season one is this fall. Season two will be spring 2022. These three gear shifts that I saw, either one of them will play a role in the road to the finale. Either one of them. Yun na nakikita ko. Plot-wise, there are legitimate backstory sequences, pero malinis pa rin ang plot. Bakit? Kasi, yung um, yung backstory sequence ni Ishinome discounts towards the main continuity of the episode. Bakit? Kasi, it's all staged by him eh. It's all part of Ishinomi's plan. Kaya, Ishinomi's plan, unfortunately, is part of the main continuity of this episode. Kaya huwag kayong makonfuse. Okay? Power tip. Huwag kayong makonfuse. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Build Divide Cold Black, episode 8, Hmm. Bakit? Well, um, they should have settled the um the Ishinomi territory rivalry right there with a battle. Kasi. Uh, ang magiging dating sa mga bagong viewers ng anime na to is ganito ba kawik ang main protag nito? Hmm. So, uh, for for veteran anime fans like me, I, I will watch it from start to finish before judging it as such. Pero, sa mga sa mga weeb, sa mga uh, first time, yeah, first time viewers of this anime, baka ma turn off sila sa episode na to. Because there was no battle scene. And yeah, it's it's a card game anime. They're expecting a battle scene. Ganito rin yung naging problema nun sa ano eh, sa episode 5. Ganitong ganito rin yung naging problema nun. So, Ah, I guess they repeated the mistake. And, well, the road to the finale should have been uh, felt right here in episode 8. As I was watching it, I didn't get those road to the finale feels, unfortunately. Although, yung, yung episode count, tama eh. Final five episodes uh, starts here. In episode 8. So, <laughs> I don't know why they, uh, why they, uh, why they did this again. But, uh, hopefully they can, um, they can make it up. They can make it up. Well, they, they've done it before. This anime has done it before. So, let, let's just hope for the best. So again, Build Divide Cold Black episode 8. Inulit nila yung mistake nila, mga lifestyle Sorry. We'll just have to wait for next week and watch the next episode. That's the drill, di ba? So, if you're already on Patreon, wait for my next upload. If you're still on the ARD, okay then. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest.